Welcome to Forever Exile, the Path of Exile podcast. This is episode 24. I am Justin, a.k.a. Tags. And I'm Tyler, Wrecker of Days. So, I feel like I say the same thing at the beginning of each time. Will we hit the... <laughs> whatever this number <laughs> is, 24. Who, yep. who knew? Who knew? That's, hey, that's I'm having a good time. two years worth of, worth of months. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> We're trying to make this episode special. That's right. Episode 24. It's this the is our episode. Two year. That's right. So this is our two year anniversary. I think we're at the halfway mark to giving away the car. I feel like that's probably right. Our third car. Mm. I feel like we've given away a lot of cars already. Yeah. Those lucky people. All mm-hmm. right. How was your week? I, What's new for you? I can't believe it's already podcast day. I feel like we just podcasted last night. I have no idea what I did this week. No, I didn't plant a tree. No, that was last week. I have no idea. All of a sudden. Yeah, you caught me off guard with that one. I re-listened to that. I was like, yeah, th- who gives a tree? <laughs> <laughs> who gets a tree? Who plants a tree? Yeah. No, I, I, I had a great week. It was all of a sudden we're here. I, so it must have been just the same old, same old, but busy, busy. How about you? Tell me about your week. Oh, man. I rode that one wheel every freaking day. <laughs> every day. It's been amazing. Nice. Yeah. It's been fun. I've been branching out more, getting my legs, as they say in the one wheel world. I don't know if that's true. Meeting cool people. I met one guy. I met the guy. He is the only certified Lego builder in Canada. And he, he, came, he came straight at me when I was riding in this parking lot area. I stopped and looked up and this guy was coming straight at me on a one wheel. And I was like, oh, my God. God, I have not seen another <laughs> one wheel anywhere. And he came right up yeah. to me and just started chatting. Super nice guy. But yeah, he's the only cert. I didn't even think that was a thing. What a job. I get. I guess you have to have them. Man, I remember when we went to Disneyland, California. They had in the shop. I, I've only been once, never went as a kid. So I don't know all the proper terms. But you know that shopping area that's right in the middle mm-hmm. of both uh, California Adventure or whatever it's called in Disneyland? Yep. There's yeah, the Lego the, one of the, oh my goodness, that store that has, it's, what, what, what is it? It's uh, Sleeping Beauty, isn't it? The dragon and the shield. And it's like all Lego and it's huge. It's way above covering the entire entrance of the Lego store. Yep. He, prob- he probably did that. Yeah. So anyway, it's been, it's been a week <laughs> of like, I, it's my savior. I'm not kidding. It's been like the saving grace to not murdering a child or a person is to just like, all right, I'm out. And I go for mm. like an hour and ride around and just, I, it's, it's awesome. you know, it's funny. I came back the other day and I did not remember anything I thought of while I was out on the ride. I wasn't thinking about work. Nice. I wasn't thinking about nothing. I was just like, don't die. Just don't fall <laughs> and look like an idiot. So mm. but yeah, maybe been- you have a split personality and you're actually crazy when you're out there and then your brain completely blocks it off when you get back home. Um, yeah, maybe. But anyway, my week was my week was one wheeling and working. It was it was good. But I did nice. get I did play POE. So we'll start with you though. What was your I don't know, what's your what's your POE experience been this week? Still playing your CI PC? Yeah, I um I didn't do it on PC. I um we haven't really connected much in POE land on PC the last couple of weeks. So I've been doing console stuff. Uh did lots of stuff. Uh, in the game, reorganize my hideout. And that's a big deal. Take some time because it takes a long time to change your mind. So you put a lot of effort into it. You can buy anything you want now, right? Like everything's oh, super so cheap. cheap. It's so good. I, could, I couldn't believe how cheap all this stuff yeah. was that I used to be like, oh, no, I can't do that. That's like 250,000 favor. Now it was like 30, 16,000. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay. So now I have the most expensive hideout that's ever up. existed. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, no, I, I played around with a few builds. I played a lot with my CI build that uh, I'm playing on PC, but on console. So it has way better. I have like 4,000 more energy shield on console than I do on PC. So that was good. Played, I think I played all four of my characters, all four of my guides throughout, throughout the week. So that was nice. Hmm. Yeah. Did you play it all? I started my new guy. I think I started my new guy right after our podcast, okay. last, our uh, episode 23, I think. And so, you- well, I talked to one of the guys in our Discord who's also playing on the private league, and he said I should play with Archmage. So I started mm-hmm. trying to play around with what I would do with Archmage. I wasn't really sure as I started leveling. And yep. uh, 
So far, I'm playing with um, Orb of Storms and using Tempest Shield to just trigger Orb of Storms many, many times. And so tell us, tell us how that works and how you came to, to choose it. I, you put down Orb of Storms and then you hit Tempest Shield and it casts many, many times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we were playing only using it. Tempest Shield to cast to well because Tempest to Shield or Orb of Storms right because every time you hit it it's a it's the fastest lightning skill in the game and okay. Orb of Storms triggers every time you use a lightning skill within while you stand within Orb of Storms right. so it's basically using Archmage and obviously other things to buff up that Orb of Storms and then Tempest Shield to get Orb of Storms to trigger. Very, very, cool. very fast. So far, it's been fun. I, I, I just finished Act 10. You helped me get through mm -hmm. a Merciless Lab today. And uh, we'll see. It's, it's okay. not the greatest yet on single target, but I have like, it's, you know, it's like when you very first complete Act 10 and you just get that massive hit to your, res you know, your resists. And I am, mm -hmm. the, the private league thing is just, it's tough. I, I, People yeah. love it. They're weird. Nah, I'm not uh, weird. Oh. Nobody's weird. You're weird. Well, I would have I would have agreed with you if you were like, no, some of them are normal. But when you said, you know, when you're relating it to you, then I know that <laughs> it's just I I want to get out of Act 10 and just buy stuff that's gonna make me yeah. right now yeah. I finished Act 10 and I looked through my I looked through my inventory and my tabs and I was like, oh my God, I have like I have some stuff. But I don't have a ton of stuff, so. But I haven't had a ton, a ton of time to play with it. I'm impressed how long you've lasted. I, I, you've done very well sticking to the private league and not just going public and buying your stuff and going for it. I, I, I have. I'm struggling with whether or not to do private league next, <laughs> next. Just expansion. so that you don't. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just That's not true. sure. I do really enjoy it because we get to play with some fun people, but I don't know if I like the experience. I'm not sure that that's mm -hmm. the experience that I'm looking for. And if it wasn't for, I can't imagine having to come onto the podcast and be like, I left my own league. <laughs> 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 so I'm sticking with it. Plus, I, I well, need to make do... sure that this second character is above you in, in the Oh, the that's ladder. impossible, man. Haven't you checked you the leaderboards of private league? Oh, I'm like every person on the front page. I feel like I've heard people talking about the fact that you're not I got on it. the first page. No, no, I crushed it. I, you log in and it's record of days, top 20. I don't think that's true. Oh, it, yeah, you, you, you fix your glasses because you're not sure. Oh, you know what? I missed out. Oh, I forgot to tell you about that I did this week mm. that I'm sure you should have watched. If you have not watched it, you should watch it. It's the last dance. It's the story of like the bulls. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And Jordan and stuff. They've got Jordan, two, Robin and Pippin. I think two episodes out so far. And I think the third one's coming I don't know. Maybe it mm -hmm. just came out. It, have you watched it? No, no. Oh. But I saw a trailer for it, and I'm like, so, "Oh man, that does look sweet." It was I'm not really even good. a basketball guy. Yeah, but you know what? It's nostalgic, like for us old guys. Oh yeah. Watching like yeah. some of the clips again from the games that I remember watching as a kid. It yeah. was, and you know what? There's a lot of storyline that I did not know was going on. Of course. Like I had no clue Pippin was paid so little. Like he was, yeah. I think, 122nd in the league for for uh pay yeah. yet he was like freaking five-time champion in seven years like it I, it was just crazy so, yeah yeah it's, it's it was, cool to hear the player's perspective to the end of the dynasty yeah it's a it's been really good i'm looking forward for the third one to come out so i forgot that i had also done that so, that's amazing um but going back to poe <laughs> welcome uh, to so archmage though so cuddles had mentioned i should check out archmage i i had heard that obviously it was pretty strong this league yeah. You know, my favorite thing about it is, though, and it's probably one of the dumbest things that's my favorite thing about it. Tell me. Uh, if I die. Yeah, which is never. You've never experienced it. But I mean, come on, you're going to die. I don't yeah. play hardcore for a reason. Uh, I don't have to put on any buffs. I just yeah. go right back in. Like you're, you're, you're gaining more damage by not having reserved mana. So yeah. it's actually weird getting used to just like. Going die straight move, in. Die and move. Die and move. Yeah. Yeah. I like it so far. Cool. Hmm. Yeah. I hope it stays strong. They always like to keep their new skills and support strong for their first league and then modify it, balance it later on. But so I really hope Archmage stays super strong. I, I like don't know the enough concept about it of it being it would... strong enough that it's like you have a good aura on. Is it nerf? 
is it in that like area i don't know enough about it like to me it was I, maybe people have I found a way so. to like abuse it or make it like super super strong i haven't seen much in terms of traffic regarding abusing anything or having anything overpowered i think people are just really excited i actually think the numbers are pretty good it's not like i would know but mm. anyway yeah so that's cool you had a note that i i unfortunately had to kick last episode because episode 23 was just i mean oh it was incredible i actually sorry before i get to this thing i have to actually give a, a shout out to the people that are listening last time i last episode i kind of blew over it which made me laugh listening to it again but we got an email from it goes through apple podcast and our podcast is in the leisure and the video game category that's sort of where we're situated okay. and i was it blew me away to know that we're in the top 40 in the united states for video mm-hmm. game podcasts and we're in the top eight we're in seventh uh we're the seventh most popular podcast in the video game category in canada which i don't get it i think it's awesome super big that's shout awesome. out to everybody that listens i think that's awesome but yeah, uh, yeah thank i just wanted, very much. i wanted to make sure i said a real thank you not like one of tyler's <laughs> fake ones like <laughs> my God, we just love you guys so much yeah oh, no that's well, that's really well, cool especially considering we're the camera. Oh. <laughs> yeah that's right rolling my eyes no that's really cool yeah. especially considering it's only about one game it's not like we just talk about our favorite games that just shows how big the community is for path of exile yeah it's awesome big it's awesome anyway so i kicked an, uh, a note of yours off of episode 23 because episode 23 was i mean it was stellar what else can you say <laughs> i think it was all i think it was mostly because we were going long but you had to mention about what you what you think is the best what or i don't really know where you were going with it but the best poe player and what that means yeah. to you yeah so why don't you why don't you run with that one tell me so that i okay. can give you my opinion <laughs> well for the few people who hang out on twitch um i watch mixer all the time and there's somebody that broadcasts on there they're they're absolutely amazing they destroy the game every time they play um but they're title their broadcast title is always best poe player here now personally i just i click on them anyway to give them a viewer but i i kind of have a hard time supporting braggers i know sometimes like when it's text and it's just a title sometimes you can't tell if someone's sarcastic or not so it's easy to miscommunicate because you never know if it's a joke but it got me thinking what is the best poe player and we kind of talked a little bit about it before, but do you do you have any opinions on that? Or do you just want me to go with it? I 100% do, but I'd rather hear yours first, to be honest. Okay. To me, the best PoE player is somebody who knows the game well enough that they basically don't need the wiki. Because I mentioned last episode when we were kind of talking about people doing those like quirky builds and stuff when you brought that up last time, that a lot of the game isn't based on your skill in gameplay. A lot of your success is based on the items that drop or that you craft. So to me, somebody, the best POE players are the type of people that can build like yourself, who can make a build on the fly, but be able to crush the game. Um, They know, oh, I'm just looking for this item and this item and this item just by knowledge. They don't need the wiki to know what supports are going to gel well with one another and the different skills they have. Okay. that's one thing that's that's what i was thinking when because a lot of people like you know it's like oh we're the best and we're clearing stuff but it's really just item based and so that's kind of what i was that's kind of the standard that i had it was more knowledge and skill level for me best poe player how about you i don't think there is a best poe player i don't or I don't, i'm not sure that there's a ranking for that because i i agree that maybe the, the more knowledge you have maybe that is going to help you but i'm not sure that will always make you better and in the end, I feel like if you're having fun, I, I'm not sure because I, I don't think, I don't know. I mean, I, I know a lot of people play this game a lot, so they probably have a very, very solid understanding of, of all of the skills and how they interact and stuff like that. Um, but I don't know. I don't know what I would consider. Mm-hmm. I, to me, there is no real best player because if you're having yeah. fun in the build that you're doing, however that's set up, I don't. I'm not sure that that makes you less good than someone who is. I yeah, I don't know because mm-hmm. is it based on like how far you've gotten in the game and how fast you got there in the game? I'm not sure that that makes you better than other people. 
Well, there are people that were getting to Cyrus really early, like right after it originally got released in three. Does that make them better POE players than others? I guess maybe. Like I've they, watched, we watched the race guys when we were in uh, <laughs> yeah. XLCon, and I think they just recently had a race. I didn't watch any of it, but uh, those guys are extremely good POE players. But then take the person who, let's say there was a person who won that every single time. Does that make them the best POE player? I don't feel like it does. It just makes them the fastest POE player. Because yeah. again, to me, the concept of the best is kind of subjective to okay. how you want to play the game and if you're having fun to it. I know people who have never fought Cyrus ever mm. and still yeah, enjoy yeah. the game. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. Okay. I I think having the, the title of best player is a little, I don't know, risky. Oh, you don't think that wins it? I'm not, no. I, I don't think I could ever. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That seems like a little cocky, but mm. whatever. Well, that's Mixer it's, though. It's, that's it's, those it's, people on Mixer though. They're all like that. They're confused. It's a tough world, man. You, you got to bump up from one viewer to two viewers, and you got to find your, <laughs> got to find a way. People are still there, hey? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> tens of us. Tens of us. <laughs> Sorry for the double digits. <laughs> I didn't even say dozens. I said tens. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I feel like I've brought this up before, but maybe not. Maybe I just complain about it to myself all the time. Um, but I had, with the amount of gameplay that I had this week, I was really frustrated. So I put this into Trello so we could chit chat about it. Whether it's MTX related or not, this game is very busy on the screen and it drives me nuts when there's things in the environment that are in my way. Like to me, POE's environment is storytelling, not part of the enemy. You know what I mean? Like you don't have trees that are coming out and poisoning you or something, right? It's always enemies. Enemies are the enemy. And I can't tell you how many times I thought my skill was broken or I, maybe I was accidentally out of mana, but I wasn't on one of those barren squares. And all it was was I couldn't see that there were stairs in front of me and I was on the wrong corner and I couldn't get down, right? I'm using shield charge instead of a teleporting skill like flame death. I can't tell you how many times I'd run into barrels that I couldn't see or these little or not barrels because they can, you know, they're, they're breakable. But, you know, these little things. And I was just so frustrated this week with my gameplay because there were so many circumstances where I couldn't move. And it was just the level design. And I like the storytelling of the level design, but it drove me nuts that it got in my way. Like that was one of the most annoying things when I used to be able to play Borderlands one of the most annoying things i'd be backing up or moving around and i have no idea why i'm stuck and then i die so would you rather have you? all parts of the game transversal or tra tra transversible because tra well you know what i mean where you can like yeah, actually yeah, yeah. walk across them um in a way yeah like i'm not the environment tells a story but if it's getting in your way like <laughs> If we were to make a game like this, we would have to understand how busy the game has become, right? How people want endless amounts of enemies. We have MTX that people are paying for and we want them to use them. You don't want the game getting in the way of fun. And to me, a lot of these different levels for the stake, for the sake of storytelling or for the sake of, uh, you know, immersiveness in the environment, it's really getting in the way for me sometimes. Certain, yeah. definitely, certain maps, certain maps for sure, especially like the indoor dungeon ones. Oh, man. Yeah. I mean, I do you find that at all? I mean, you use a lot of teleporting skill. skills, but. Oh, uh, shield I, charge, it's a huge issue for sure. Mm -hmm. There's there's certainly some things like that that, that come up. Uh, for me, when it comes to like stuff within the game that I get irritated with, uh, that reminds me not so much of Borderlands, just because PoE just, when PoE dumps items, it dumps ridiculous amount of items there was like a great picture on reddit just recently that was talking about a i want to say it was a i didn't actually catch what it was but i'm i'm assuming it was like maybe some delirious map or something but where they they hit alt to show all of the drops with like no filter and yeah. i mean the game used to be like that i remember when we had to play like that it was terrible but it's so much worse now and what drives me crazy is when you're like that and you can't drop an item like if I'm trying to clear yeah. a spot out of my inventory and because I'm in the middle of yeah. items I can't see, for some yeah. reason I can't put them on the ground. You have to run two screens over to drop an item. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I, I think I don't know that I I don't know how you'd fix that because you couldn't just make everything uh 
able to be moved over. So I'm not I'm not really sure. But yeah, I do know what you mean. It does suck to get stuck by like a rock. Mm -hmm. Like that's not whatever. So yeah. this week there weren't any patches. So uh, there were like hot fixes, right? So I think yeah, there was like one hot fix, but nothing major. But mm -hmm. we did have some you you texted me about it. Uh, uh this is just the first part I'm gonna bring up. I'll let you do the rest, but the league portal's coming out. I think that just came out yesterday. Oh, yesterday, the day before, Whatever. something like that, yeah. It was, it was within this week, so they did Delirium, Legion, and Synthesis um, league portals that you can purchase. Mm -hmm. yeah, and so cool. I want to hear your opinion. And then I'm, oh, actually, yeah, I do. I want to know what you thought of that first. I feel like we're both on probably the same page. I love portals. Freaking awesome. And I think that league portals are awesome. Sure. You know what I mean? Like if you have a favorite league, you get that portal. Like it's just an extra excuse to go out and buy buy something else. I just, I love portals and I think every single league that starts, they should release the previous league's portal every time. I love it. So I yeah, I uh I'm the same way. We both love portals and I will pay money for any portal that like tickles my fancy. I will I'm going to just throw a bone out here to the annoyingly large number of whiners on of course it's on reddit and on their forum post that instantly start to jump on about how dare you try to make money and how you know this should be this shouldn't be something that you're purchasing with mtx and this should be coming through the league now my argument is i actually don't disagree i do think that a league specific portal should always be a challenge reward but I also think that at the start of the next league, it should be purchasable. I think you should be able to earn oh, okay. that okay. league's uh, portal by completing okay. whatever it is, 34 challenges. I don't, I don't see any problem with that. But some of us aren't. I'm, I'm not going to get 34 challenges completed in almost any league. It's no. not my focus. Sometimes it's fun to try it, but I just I know I'm not going to get it. But I have money, so let me buy it. And I like it, so let me buy it. And, and anyone who argues with that, I don't want to say you're an idiot, but you kind of are because grinding gear games is in this business to make money. They're making a phenomenal game. That's fanboy Justin here. They're making a great game. There's things we have issues with, but they have to make money. It's a free game that they make money off these microtransactions. If they, mm -hmm. if you have the ability to earn that microtransaction just by playing a lot and playing well, I have no problem with that. As awesome. someone who's paying money to GGG, I think that's great that you were able to earn it. And you didn't have to pay whatever it was, eight bucks or 10 bucks or whatever the cost of them is. Yep. But for the other people who are willing to spend money, why on earth would GGG not make it available to purchase? Yeah. Yeah. Especially because you're not giving it away for free. So you're not screwing over the challenge. Right. And for those that are capable of getting that, you just save yourself 15 bucks. Yep. I, it, that's a lot of, well, that's a lot of money to me. It anyway. is. Well, especially if you counted it over multiple leagues and whatever the different challenge rewards were. So I, yep. I understand because last league, they, or no, this league, it was the Delirium League that they didn't do a portal. Last league, they did do a portal. And people were saying like, oh my God, it's just a back attachment at 36. And oh, right, I'm right, actually right, 100% right, right. behind that because it makes it even less likely that I'm going to try to go for the challenges. But yeah. I've done challenges where they have a portal and I'm like, oh my God, I love that portal. I want it. Yeah. yeah. It changes never. the kind of character you make. I've never it gotten it. how ever <laughs> but i will buy it when it comes yeah, out yeah. if i like it i'll buy it yeah so the fact that they came out with these three uh i like two of them i really like mm -hmm. legion and delirium and i will probably buy them and yeah. that to me makes sense from a business perspective i just I, i'm trying i'm really i really really try sometimes to understand what people are whining about i just yeah. i feel like right now it's even worse because people are you know at home a lot and people are probably a little bit Maybe. stir crazy and now you're you're just you're finding stupid reasons to be whiny but you and i are old and we sit on our porches with our brooms and our record players and we have the wisdom of the world <laughs> i don't know i don't know we're playing path but of exile for I, god's sake I, it's a freaking portal go buy it or don't yeah. buy it who cares and if you want to earn it then i i, I do agree I think grinding gear game should have a portal in every league. If you're going to make a league specific portal, I think it should be part of the challenge every single time. 
Yeah. It shouldn't be something that let's say delirium came out and right at the release of delirium, there was a delirium portal you could purchase, but the back attachment was the challenge. I'm not, I'm not cool with that. I think make people like myself and yourself who aren't going to get the challenge suffer through that league, knowing that these guys who have completed the challenge got that portal and it looks awesome. All it does is makes me next league go. Yeah. I'm, I'm buying that for sure. As soon as it's available. Yeah, that's cool. I, uh, I don't think that they should have to have a portal as a league, uh, as a league reward, but I'm definitely if not they're going to have one though. Oh, well, if they're having rewards, they shouldn't have to have, they should be able to put whatever they want. If there's going to be a league specific portal. Yeah. All yeah, I'm yeah, saying yeah. is I feel like yeah. it should be one. I don't feel like I should get to have a delirium portal in the delirium league when the challenge is for a dumb back attachment. If you want you. people to do the challenges. Yeah. I don't think we're the only ones that like get excited no. over portals. So no. What was the minion league? Was that 3.7 or 3.8? What, what was eight. the minion league? I think it was eight. I forget what it was. Anyway, they had the Bane support pack or the Lich, the Bane Lich support pack. I think it yep. was, it was kind of yellow and skeletony and hmm. they had a, the matching portal was a league reward. And it was feasible for me. And the power of marketing portals for someone like me is I still regret not doing it. I wanted to do League on console just for that portal. I didn't. And I still think about it. It's been two or three leagues, whatever the minion league was, whenever they brought in, brought in Meat Shield and Beating Frenzy. Mm. I still think about it. I, every time I load my character, because I got that support pack, every time I look at that character and see like, oh, you don't have a matching portal <laughs> and it was there it drives me nuts there's a power to the portals for me anyway I, for me i feel like if there's going to be a league specific one make it part of the challenge release it the next league and all the the dummies like us will go yeah sure i'm not <laughs> getting 36 challenges it's just not going to happen yeah i'm happy for people who do i just know my limit <laughs> i'm like 20 <laughs> yeah. i just want to yeah. get the trophy and then um, yeah. yeah. But it's but, usually by hey, accident. I'm not focused on it. If you go out and buy them now, this week, you get a free mystery box. Yeah, so, that's cool. Hey, right on. Get, like one now, of the same things I already got. I got a little bit of my old school, like, kind of got tweaked a little bit this week. You know how um, I, I, uh, I forget if we were doing the podcast at the time or not, when, when all, it was just nonstop celestial MTX that were coming out. We've, what, you mean like in the beginning? No, yeah, like when all it. of a sudden I was messaging you and it was like, when I oh, bought they came all the out with MTX, went. you'll never guess what they came out with. And then, I right mean, oh, goodness, it was nonstop. And it was like three months worth of Celestial only. Anyway, it's, it's almost like they're, they're, they've been trying to stop, like trying to quit smoking and couldn't do it and came back to it. So they, they went out on like a crazy Celestial release spree. And then they, okay, so, okay, no, 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 now, now they didn't. <laughs> this week they just it was like everything they had a couple other ones as well which is nice i think like an automaton automatron what was it so, uh cyclone i think but they came up with a lot of celestial skills this week it was like uh someone's trying to quit smoking who tried to do it and couldn't came back so now i know what it was smoking. it's that they had them all done when they were going crazy with <laughs> celestials and they were like oh god we're getting a lot of pushback on this let's just bank yeah. those for two or three oh, months probably. and then we'll throw them out there Probably now, and I get that they sell. I get that they sell. I just don't. I, they don't interest me. So when a new MTX comes out, I get excited. I get excited when it's an MTX that I like. I get excited. They obviously but anyway. sell though. Okay, oh, like crazy. They're super cool. So we've been doing the videos, the different like mm-hmm. random GGG ones, and yeah. this one came out, and I was like, we have to watch this one because I really, really like this guy, and it was the um, behind the music act one. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to say his name because I will absolutely butcher it. Uh, but it's the uh, composer and the music. He does all the, I'm going to try and say his name. Camille Orman Janowski. That's that cool. sounded perfect. He's the uh, music director and composer for Path of Exile. One of my favorite people there. Um, just yeah. because I think, I, I don't know what it is about him. But I like the music. I love the music in Path of Exile. I Agreed. And, and since the uh conquerors came out i mean you know i cannot stop playing the crusader song in our podcast i don't think it will ever yeah. be something different at the beginning of the end because <laughs> every time i hear it i'm like oh my god it just it's epic it's so yeah. good 
So I said, yeah. I'm like, we have to watch this. This this is the behind the scenes, I guess. It's the music for Act 1 of Path of Exile 2. Talks about the different... Uh, it's short. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Because it's like four and a half minutes. It's like the yeah. shortest one that they've done of these by a long shot. And it's it gets you so crazy good. hyped for POE 2 right? as well. Yeah, I oh. all I, I know... The music that he's talking about there in there is incredible, but wow, does it ever get you psyched up for Path of Exile 2? Yeah. It was impossible to watch that and not just be like, God damn it. How do oh, we fast goodness. forward time here? It's I I hear you. And COVID's probably pushed back the release of POE 2 as well. Um, but I couldn't believe, like, we'll get back to the music in a second. The clips that they showed mm-hmm. when they were when, you know, because music and visuals uh, hand in hand work together and i couldn't believe how it looked how characters moved there was one scene where i i I mean you didn't really notice at first because you're used to kind of glazing over it and just looking at combat and skills and stuff but when they zoomed out or panned to the side you realized you were on a cathedral edge but it was actually a really high depth perception and you felt crazy high and that's not something you really get in this game so i was Oh man, it looked good. It looked good. But yeah. anyway, sorry, I interrupted oh, you. You no, go on. It, it was super. It was a a great Path of Exile two hype video for four and a half minutes. It was yeah. it was like as good as the trailer. My favorite thing about what he has to talk about, I guess there were kind of two, and I'm actually kind of guilty of I play the game and I don't always pay attention to the sound, the music, and I I, I was thinking about it as I was watching his interview. I wonder what playing other video games is like for him Mm. because I'm curious if he goes through a video game and is like focused on like the story or the graphics and the visual, like the things that are, are always going to draw you. Or if he's like, shit, did you just hear that? Like, I'm, I'm curious if he's like, if if that's how he sort of goes into games and sort of is, because I, I'm not, Mm -hmm. I'm not great at that. It's really easy for me to overlook and not realize that that's actually playing a huge part into why. Yeah. I'm having such a great experience in it, but yeah. I was floored at the fact that he talks about how he got the graphics and the visuals from the team, from these different areas in, in act one. And then he just starts to compose. Yeah. Like I probably yeah. couldn't write a sentence by looking at a graphic <laughs> and yet he's like, you just, I, that was incredible to me. I thought that yeah. was so cool. Well, and he's complimenting the art team too, yeah. right? About how they, it looks so much better and they're able to put so much more detail in the game that immediately, like you don't know, no, but right away he could naturally come up with something that perfectly matched what he wanted for that environment. And so that's, it's really neat. I, I agree. I wrote that down too. That's really cool. Did you play D2? Diablo 2? No. I oh did. my God. When he's like one of the first things I started to think of when I hear the sounds, I still hear it with Path of Exile on its own, but yeah. man, there were parts where I was just like, it just it's so good at capturing certain parts of path of exile 2 or sorry diablo 2 yeah sound and uh, he made note of it too that it yeah it's obviously a really big uh influence for them is the music from from diablo 2 i i wonder if it's a prerequisite to have to love diablo 2 or have a certain amount of gameplay hours in diablo 2 before you're hired there if you ever played I feel like a lot of people who play Path of Exile probably came from a Diablo, Diablo two sort of background. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there's just, you hear like the sounds or like, I just like the sound of Decker Kane or like these different sounds from Diablo two that will instantly take me back yeah. to like playing it, you know, land parties with, with people. This is, this is when I had yeah. friends, <laughs> <laughs> not, not just you. I had other friends. <laughs> But I was young enough and had time no. for friends. And then. No, I don't want to. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go no, ahead. no. No, I was going to say, I didn't want to like talk more Diablo, but um, when did Diablo 3 come out? I have no idea. Okay. Long time ago, right? Yeah. I can spoil something. If somebody hasn't played Diablo 3, well, that's too bad. Oh, God. If they haven't, they won't. Okay. Good. So, uh, Deckard, big, big deal in the Diablo world, right? And then number three comes along and they kill him. You think they're going to kill anyone in PoE 2? You know you the difference is nobody who cares. Character? Who cares? Oh, don't say that. It's don't not Game that. of Thrones. I, I, You're not going to go anyway. like, oh my god, they killed oh, Santa. Man. All right, who'd you give me instead? Oh, if they did that, I'd be, I my jaw would drop. Wait, jaw would drop. Would yeah, it? I said that right. 
Yeah? That's the elder's girl. Uh, no, not girl. Daughter. Daughter. Well, same thing, I mean, same thing. You, don't you said it kind of sexual. It's kind of weird. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah. I wouldn't care if they killed anybody. But you know who they could kill? Helena. Just knock that chick off. I'm done with her. What? She's cool. No, she's not. She's What's wrong with her? Her, her sayings are terrible. Yeah, but she doesn't get in your way. She's no Alva. And we're not talking about Alva. Anyway, I loved in the video, now that we're back on the video, <laughs> and not talking about Alva. And we do love Helena. Nope. I love at the very end, uh, they were joking with them if he, like, hey, so what do you... What do you want to say to anybody that mutes your music? Yeah, that and was he my just other part laughed of like, and laughed, and it was it was pretty funny because he didn't I really laugh. We watching, he kind of like looked right at the camera and was like, "Don't do it." <laughs> <laughs> well, remember a long time ago we watched a video about uh, when the, and the art team was being interviewed, and they were asked about their opinions of all the effort they put into the three D art for the base rare types, and then also sure. for the unique items, and they were you know. They they just understood that their company makes money by covering up all their hard work with MTX. Yep. And uh, I love the freedom of PC. I'm a console player, but I do like the the customizability. Is that a word? Of PC and being able to change things up. But in PC, the only thing that's louder than the music is my loop filter, and that's probably only because I make my own. Otherwise, I'd probably have it pretty quiet. But I love the music. I, I think I've mentioned before how much. I like the music, like just with the the music player in my hideout. Yep. I probably spend just as much time changing and picking my music in my hideout than I do reorganizing and like changing my hideout. I just absolutely love it. Like the ascendant theme. Oh my goodness, the drums in that. Anyway, I think the guy's fantastic. I never knew his name before, and I'm really glad you showed me the video because the music in POE is awesome. It's and so good. oh my goodness, in POE too. He referenced it, of course, and you really notice it because they're trying to show it off. But it is so much more less, like he said, less orchestrated and it's more environmental and creepy and surround sound. And ooh, don't play with the lights off. Yeah, it's good. I hope that they have done something to optimize uh, music and sound in PoE2 because Path of Exile, you actually can get typically uh, an improvement in how well the game plays by turning mm -hmm. the music off. So. Hopefully that's fixed because I, I really do like having the music playing in the background, especially if it's yeah. a freaking crusader from uh, <laughs> Conquers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe they can add little sound effects for, you know, when you have a debuff or something. It's like, oh, no, I'm in point. Or, I, I mean, that would be really lame. But when I play console and I'm and there's a thousand debuffs in the game that can be applied to you, right? No, um, I don't think there's. I a even thousand. remember. I think there's two thousand, and I even remember somebody in our Discord was like, "What? What is this?" And they tried to look and tried to find it on the wiki, and it took them quite a while. Yeah. Not the wiki's fault, of course, but I wish there was a legend in the help section or in the tutorial section. I just wish there was an icon legend in the help section that you could go and just scroll for it, look See for it, and be like, "Oh, yeah." Yep. Oh, that's what that was. Or even if you just saw the picture quickly, you could scroll through and be like, okay, it was either that one or that one. Oh, it's either bleed or this bone dot or something. That does I seem like something awesome. that would be good in, in the tutorial. Yeah. Yeah. It, I think so. E even in PC land, but for console players, yeah, screw we them. can't highlight. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't highlight those icons. They're just pictures. They just show up and go and you have to just pretend you know what you're talking about. So anyway, just a little thing. Not really a, a legitimate segue, but I wanted to bring up if anyone from GGG is listening, a legend of your buff and debuff icons would be really nice. Good talk. Yeah, I agree. I don't care about it for console, but sometimes in PC, you don't even have time to put your mouse up there over it. And oh, especially totally. if you're playing something that's got lots of them, it does get a little, yeah. a little out of hand. Yeah, especially when it's covering your whole screen. Yeah. Also, I'm going to switch on my favorite maps. To the rare hideout tile sets. Cool, huh? What? So, you know, there's the hideouts that you that show up very rarely in certain maps in the Oh, Atlas. okay. So, like in like Glacier Summit, or whatever. Glacier, yep. yeah, stuff like that. Well, I'm going to set all my favorite maps in the Atlas to the ones where you can get the hideouts. Just so that you unlock them all? Yeah, so I have a chance. Anyway, I haven't unlocked any on console. Do you have any particular ones that you are gunning for? I want all of them. 
I guess the shaper one's going to be even harder to get now, though. That one's just from fighting him, right? It's like a rare chance after you kill him. Yeah, but now he's a lot more rare to fight, I guess. Yeah, maybe. Like yeah. He's not the end, well, he's not the end game guy anymore, so you can't just like go through the atlas, get your guardian maps, and shove it in there. So if you play yeah. like if you play like ninety percent of other players, though, you can just buy the fragments and do it. Also, nah, I so feel like people probably sell them in the trade league, but that's a cool idea. Although that doesn't really help you for paper. <laughs> no, and it's also really screwing me in getting the maps that I want to get all the watchstones. I basically put my desire to get all the rare hideouts over Atlas completion. So, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm curious actually on your, because you, you've been playing console, you said, right? Yep. Have you progressed much? I know you were fighting Cyrus. Where were you? Like one? What level of Cyrus have you been up to? You haven't gotten him to Awaken or 8, right? No, I'm on 6. Oh. Do you beat him yeah. at 6? Uh, uh, no. Actually, you know what? I don't think I've beaten him on console yet. Now that we speak. Because it, he just came out last league. I did mostly played with you. You played a lot last league. Mm -hmm. So I played a lot with you last league. Right? Like we've mentioned, there was a lot of new content. It was easy to play for a long time. And so I barely got any console time in before. And there was only so much that was unlocked based on previous completion before. So I actually had to start and go through. So I'm at like you know, 16, 18, I don't know, whatever as six is, what is that? 24, three each almost, right? Or three for each section. So anyway, so I went through and I'm, I'm unlocking them and I'm going through. And I think I mentioned in a previous podcast how I was kind of, it, it didn't seem like I was getting the right colors for the right influence that was happening. And maybe it was because I was in a partial process of unlocking influence when the new league was unlocked when 310 came out so i was i was kind of getting gypped a little bit with the the watchstones that i was getting but since then the new process has been i've been getting a watchstone every single time i've beaten the conquer or, or yeah the conquer um but i think i found a little bit i don't know if it's an oversight with atlas progression but it did seem to kind of screw me over you can't really seem to fight a low level cyrus more than once can you like I you're going through so. and you're unlocking watchstones, right? And every time you fight, you can't get influence without, how do I word this? You can't get influence without doing higher tier maps, right? You have to keep improving your tier of map to be able to unlock the influence to show up in a region, right? Like I can't just keep doing T1s after I've earned four watchstones, right? You have to keep putting higher and sure. higher and higher. And so, but one neat thing that I do like about the Atlas is that you don't actually have to beat Cyrus, right? You have to beat the conquerors, but you don't actually have to beat Cyrus to keep improving your map. It's just the conqueror. Mm. But if you lost at Cyrus at awakening level one, well, you don't get to try that again. You can't get those same influence levels with the same maps you have to and you're earning more watchstones so now the next time you fight him it's going to be two what does the you game do that? if you don't beat cyrus at one let's say well, you have to spawn influence again right so you have to beat all four again but the only way to get that influence is to do higher tier maps because you right you have four watchstones okay so now next time you have to earn four more okay well now you have eight so now he's at awakening level two and so there's not really a process to help you get better at him he just keeps getting harder until you're just constantly fighting it at Awakener level eight. I, right. When we, when Atlas, when Conquerors first came out, one of the things that I remember us talking about and I'd mentioned to you that had me concerned was when I make a second character or a third character or a fourth character, the mapping process could become quite a bit more difficult yeah. if you're not super geared by the time you get to maps because if you want to continue to progress, you're fighting higher tier maps, but then you're also fighting a much, much higher tier Cyrus with, yeah. with potentially much lower level gear than what you had on yeah. whoever you used to unlock it. Either that or you're basically wasting your maps down below because they're not being <coughs> used for spawning. I guess there's nothing else for a lower tier maps, but you'd be wasting them because you're not using them to gain influence in a region, right? I wonder why they don't make it so that you can pull out the orbs and unlock the guys at a low tier so that I could unlock Cyrus tier one yeah, and just be able to fight him at tier one. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious. I haven't played 
nearly enough with Endgame because maybe that even is a possibility. I just don't know of any way that you would do that. The new mechanics that they just unlocked don't seem to do it. Like how the new Atlas progression system that they came out with for 310 doesn't allow for that. The thing that gets me though is that I get it. I got excited at the prospect of awakening gems. Yep. But for me, I can't get them at one. I can't get them at two. Even if there was a lesser chance to get them at Cyrus level one. Yep. I, like I still can't do it. I have to do Cyrus at level six now. Right. But anyway, I did fight Cyrus at level six, uh, awakening level six. And uh, it wasn't as bad as I, uh, as the previous time that I fought him. Right. Before a bunch of these changes. But there were a couple things that just drove me mad. All right. One of them is I hate the red spinny circles. Yep. I, I see no point to them. And it drives me nuts that they hurt me just by getting close. I can't see the proximity. I have to guess how close I am. And sometimes based on where they move or where he moves and the last thing that he did, I have to troubleshoot my way to get to him. And maybe I have to use a couple flasks to get there. And all of a sudden I have less. And he's not really someone that you're gaining a lot of flask charges with. So I really, I don't see a point. Like if you're trying to limit the arena, just make the level smaller. Like it doesn't actually have to be Oriath. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, it drove me nuts that there were long periods of invulnerability. There's a part where he's in the air yep. for a long period of time. And the small version of him isn't on the ground. Mm -hmm. it, like, what, what am I going to do? Like, what, like, a lot of your game revolves around so many time-specific things, buffs, charges. And it's just dumb. Like, I'm standing there, just waiting, waiting. Yeah, I do remember that. I, like, if I could... Ah, anyway, drove me nuts, drove me nuts. Um, oh, this, this one's the biggest one, though. I can handle those other two, right? I can handle those other two if they had to be in the fight. But this one drove me nuts. I hate any game where I can get damaged from something I can't see on my screen. Like it's so it's not an invisible thing that comes from underground, but getting shot by an enemy that's out of my normal size monitor drives me nuts. I freaking hate that. And he does that. What's it called? It's almost like a scorching ray. Yep. Whatever skill that is. He can shoot it from outside my screen. All the time. I remember the very first time I fought him on console. I died three times to him because I was trying to find him through the circles. And I just think I found him boom, dead. The argument I would have on the other side, though, is that every time he's going to do that skill, you just run off screen and then you can't get hit. How do you know he's going to do it? Well, it's, it's, you can't it, see him. Yeah. The one you're talking he's about. He's off screen. He has a build up to it. Right. But if you see him on the screen, right, like it's. You're not always near him when he's going to start it. You might be coming from around the circle. He might be doing one of those, like, he has that pulsing circle thing where he's pushing you away from him. All of a sudden, he's off the screen. And then you're, getting, you're taking huge damage from something you can't see. That kind of stuff drives me nuts. That's, that's the RNG factor that I was talking about last week, though. Right? Like, that's not, what, what am I supposed to do? Jump back and forth until I feel like it's safe? Buy a bigger uh, monitor or play at a smaller resolution. Or bigger resolution. I uh, can't do either. <laughs> I anyway, it, it wasn't. It wasn't. An, it, it wasn't. I don't like getting hit by off screen experience. stuff either. No, I don't find it's that common anymore, though. Wow. You used to die to like off screen reflect all the time. Yeah. 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 So I but, I, you know, I, it's on the other side, too. I I don't like that. I can kill things off my screen. You're such a like small that's such a small percentage of people. Though, though. I get that, but yeah. I would be fine. I would much rather have it. In, I would much rather have all the damage that can impact me be on the screen and also me only being able to damage what's on the screen as opposed to the other way around. I don't know. Makes sense? I know where you're coming from, but then how does that? I don't, I don't, I feel like you maybe are giving some people an unfair advantage based on their size of monitor or the resolution they're willing to play at or. You know, like when I'm playing, I see a much wider amount of the screen. So does that mean I should be able to clear a bigger amount of the map than you should be able to if we use the same skill? I think they should have a default what it should be. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just disagree. <laughs> oh, man. I, there is nothing worse than dying from something you didn't even know was coming. COVID-19? <laughs> I haven't died from it. I haven't died from it. Anyway, 
Anyway, that's my Sarah stuff. It's a lot better than it used to be. That's for sure. Yeah, I haven't done it this league yet. But I got to say, I don't think they work for GGG. But whoever it was a long time ago that came up with the idea of earning experience points, kind of like a resource and leveling up, whoever came up with that, just in general, in video games or whether it was Dungeons and Dragons, I don't know, wherever it was, but whoever it was, they've turned my life around. I just, I just want to give them a great big smile. Just the whole like RPG idea in general, like just where you're leveling a character. Whoever came up with the concept of earning experience as a points, as a progress bar, that is the most brilliant thing that's ever come to be. Hmm. I wonder where it from came from. Hope. Oh, I don't know. I wonder how long ago it was. Yeah, I don't know. I wonder if they're still alive. It is a good idea, though. Mm-hmm. Okay. So last, I think it was that last episode that we talked about the whole league mechanics and different ideas for leagues and uh, I, with the conversation oh, like somehow moving uniques from one league to another. Right, to it was based on the video we watched, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you had talked about this horrible idea about controlling which uniques could drop and that it was, it was my idea. no uniques could drop. Well, you agreed with it. It was terrible. Um, I, 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 okay, I re-listened to it and still thought you were just as nuts in okay. our conversation. Okay. Are you, you still think that? You still think that they no. should... No, 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 not at all. I just want to see what the, I, my point last episode was just, I wanted to see what the community would do, like how they would suggest builds, how they would have a new meta when all it was, was rares and crafting and 100% RNG. There wasn't anything to farm, no divination cards to get a certain unique item. I just think it would be neat to see. But to me, like the, I don't think you could have a, a path of exile and only rare items. Like you could, but you, it wouldn't be a multi-million dollar game. And I don't think you could have it unique only. I think you have to have both to have the infinite amount of customizable options. I don't think you can 100%. live. I don't think they can live without each other. They're like that. Uh, they're like that couple, that old couple that fights all the time, but they love each other. Smashes a lot. in the bedroom. I think the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I. Uh, <laughs> Uh, my, I think I, I feel like I might have said it and I might have gotten lost um, in our last episode over you talking. But I really do think if you did. I never um, interrupt you. If I could reach through this camera right now. Uh, <laughs> if if you I really, really do think that if you took out uniques, people would just not play. I don't think it would be so much a, an idea of like, well, let's see what the community does. I think it would be, well, <laughs> shit, where'd half the community go? Yeah. Just because you're taking away the choice now. I don't know how they would ever do it, but I think the idea of a crafting focus league would be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. But I also, I know how to craft and I know that if you don't put in a lot of time into this game to earn currency, crafting is not super fun. No, it's not. You need a lot of currency to do, right. to be able to go deep in the if game. If I get an exalt that I could use to craft an item in, yeah. in almost all circumstances until i'm in very end game and very min maxing my characters that exalt is not worth crafting it nope. is worth selling and purchasing something you so, need something like three exalts to do the multi-mod crafting and right. then you know some of the expensive. some of the some and of the, then some of the mods that you actually want right. are a couple of exalts. Yeah. yeah so uh, it uh, it would be cool to have a crafting league i just don't know how they would do it because i don't think you could just go all right so we're going with just rares and I, there are mods on the uh, private leagues that are certainly more geared towards yeah, yeah. crafting. Like I think you can not have rares drop. So that means you have uh, or to craft. only normals. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the idea behind it's cool, but holy geez, if I was required to only get normals items, I would not You'd, last We'd long. be playing Borderlands. No. Yeah, I wouldn't last long at all. <laughs> I, I got to say, though, because I, I am a rare only type of player. I love that aspect of it. Um, I, I think unique items are a very good stepping stone for people to learn how to make their own builds. Like, that's how I did it. I, I was intimidated by all the gear. I had no idea. I can't tell you how many times I came to you and like, hey, hey, is this a good drop? Can you check the price for me? Is this awesome? And it was always garbage always but i always thought they were great and building when you start building your own builds and you start focusing on okay well 
I want this weapon and this weapon, or this weapon and this chest piece. It removes a lot of the stress. You can build around something, and it helps you learn mechanics and mods slowly in that regard and how it influences They're exciting too. of your build. You'll never yeah. get excited when a rare drops, but you will get excited sometimes when a unique drops. Mm -hmm. Like a rare yeah. is not exciting until you've identified it and you've checked out what the, the mods are that rolled on it, what tier they are. Yeah. A unique, uh, every single person, when a, rare, mm -hmm. a unique leather belt drops, even though you know you're in a section that Headhunter can't drop, you're still like, oh, right, yeah, why yeah. did I do that? So, I don't know. Yeah, The uniques sure. just, they add a fun part to the game. Oh, totally. Totally. They do. Anyway, thanks for misunderstanding me. I really appreciate it. You're a really good listener. I try. Yeah. So I um I had a rough, I, it wasn't really a rough session. I just got really annoyed with the whole Cyrus thing and trying to unlock him. Um, I thought of a neat, I, I, was, I was stuck in a tough spot. I had three conquerors all ready to go. They were already done, right? They were unlocked. And I only had one more conquer to go. I think it was the blue section. And... I was two rectangles or two squares away from being able to fight Cyrus, right? I needed to do two more maps in that region that were influenced or worthy of being influenced. And they weren't dropping. I didn't have them in my stash, right? I have a billion maps of every tier, but I didn't have the ones that I needed to be able to progress the influence. And maps kept dropping, kept dropping. It wasn't a problem of maps. It was a problem of maps dropping for that region, even though I had favorited maps in that region that were of the level that I needed. And I was thinking, how nice would it be? Like for that circumstance, I don't really want to start using maps from another region because I don't want to get stuck when I need the maps for that region when I'm trying to get influence. So I was thinking, how neat would it be to have an orb that lets you change your map and keep it the same tier? There's already an item for that, but keep it for the same region. So I, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. Or not the same tier, but... I, I would like to be able to re-roll a map for a region that I'm looking for so that I'm not wasting other regions' maps trying to get just two maps for this region, like a T15 and 16. Does that make sense? Did I explain that properly? Yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. I mean, because the Orb of Horizon is the one that will let you um, re-roll it and keep it at the same tier. Yeah. I'm not sure. I mean, the one thing I will say that I definitely noticed this league, I can't remember if I noticed it last league or not, Orb of Horizons are pretty common now. They're definitely not a low drop. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I know. in the beginning of doing your tiers, it's not a big deal because there's not like a ton of tier 12 and 13 yeah. maps. But once you get enough of the orbs out there, then, yeah, you could be rolling between a lot of 12 to 15 tier yeah. maps. Uh, yeah. I just finally do get a lot of Orb of Horizons. I don't know, though. Would that be, I hate the idea of a whole new currency. Because you well, need to have one that lets you get outside one. the region. You need to. It makes it makes expanding the atlas way easier. Sure, but they all do that. Nothing's region specific right now. Right, but if and you added all I region specific, was, then you would be adding a whole new orb. Well, one orb is different than eight new orbs. Anyway, I don't. I don't really know how to do it. I just. I was in a circumstance where I had to spend. I had to use my maps of another region that I only had a few of for T15s or 16s. Right. And I'm like, wow, I definitely need those yep. once Cyrus resets. But I have to use them hoping for a drop for this one. And I have like a ton of T16s and 15s, but the one that I needed, I didn't have any of, mm. right? Whatever region that was. I don't know, New Vestia or something. I don't know. No. So I was just thinking maybe there was something that I could Did you spam to try it. Well, because there, there's the selling aspect of it. Now. Like the selling side of of selling within the region guarantees that the map you receive is within the same region. And what's crazy is every oh, the map, three to one. Yeah, and every map oh. has its own ID. So if you have three, I'm just gonna use beach. If I had six, I'm gonna take six beaches, and I go to sell the first three of them. The resulting one that I could get, which will stay within that same region. But the resulting one that I get may not be the same result if I take the first beach and the last two beaches, like five and six. Huh. They each have like an individual ID, so you can actually swap them in and out. And Oh, man. Yeah. Okay. I don't need to know. Might norm. be something to look I at. Told, I 100% I forgot about vendoring maps. Yeah, it's cool that they're now region-specific when you do the vendor. 
That's awesome. Okay, never. I take it back. And I wish I thought of that when I was playing. Now you know. It would have saved me a ton of <laughs> time. Oh my goodness. You never messaged me uh, that one. I never got that. What? I never got that message from you saying, hey. Oh, that complaint? Yeah. No, you were probably in bed. It was after eight o'clock. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's right. <laughs> That's my bedtime. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm glad we helped you out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just wanted to say one quick thing. I spent a lot of time in Delve trying to get to like a map icon. This area contains maps. Yep. I got there. There was one map chest. It dropped a T4. It's like a tier one Alva map room. It's the worst thing you could possibly walk into. Alva's it already a cow, but it was yeah. like level 278 and I got a T4 from a map section. Really? Oh, that's bad. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I I do wish in Delve, like when I'm like gunning and I'm spending 45 minutes trying to find how to get to this currency section, I wish it always had at least three chests. To me, if it's two chests or less, whether it's the map section, the the, the section I'm excited for, if there's two or less chests, yeah, I feel like I got chipped. I, yeah. Yep, I agree. I feel like I got the cleaning crew. But anyway, that wasn't related to anything. I just... uh I, I guess I had a rough session. I felt like it was really good. And all of a sudden I'm reading my notes and all I'm doing is complaining. But <laughs> Go on Reddit. I, I love the game. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Now, hey, remember, so last week I asked you about shocking, right? Yeah. And ignite. Yeah. And if a low level right. damage could shock or ignite. I'm not, I, I do, I use path of building. I don't marry myself to it. I use it to, it's like an easy place to organize and sure. get all your stats at once. But totally. I definitely don't take the stats biblically. Yep. And I think in this situation, I might though, there's still a lot of really good math, even though it doesn't have all the mechanics. Now I don't use POB fork or the community aspect. I just like what open RL gives, but there's a section in the calculations tab that gives you your chance to shock and that kind of stuff. And when you highlight, it also tells you what the maximum life of the maximum maximum life of an enemy can be for you to shock that person sure. or for you to ignite that person. Yep. And no matter how I twisted it around, no matter anything I did with any other supports, basically that low level shock that I had. So let's just in case you didn't hear last episode, I have a cast when damage taken level one with a shock Nova level four it's doing crap damage It's a minion build. So I don't have anything into shock damage or lightning damage or spell damage. It's just like just a wet noodle smack in the enemy. I wanted it to shock people. Basically, it said the enemy can't have more than four uh, four thousand five hundred maximum life, which I mean, so, that's what act two. <laughs> yeah. So um, is there somewhere uh, to compare Matt or to actually see max life, though? I've not seen so that to before. actually see it. No, but here's the point, though, with a build like that, you never care about the crap in the map. You care about the big bosses. Sure. And so who's going to have forty five yeah, no bosses? Nobody, yeah. Right. So the whole point is to make those longer bass boss battles shorter. And so that I, I have nowhere else to compare it to. So I kind of have to marry myself to path the building on this one. I've seen it before. I tried to get around it. I've even included it in some of my build guides before, just in case. But well, numbers I wise and excluded. stats wise, I feel like you'll be usually pretty on point on point. The only th oh, the yeah. only thing that I would warn people about is that just don't make that DPS number that you see be the be all in oh we've talked about yeah. it before what's my shaper yeah. dps what's my shaper dps sometimes yep. that can be really high and not and not be great and sometimes it can be what you would think is low yep. but you're not considering how that skill actually works in the game and so but otherwise i feel like pob is like bang on with their like yeah. stats and their numbers and calculations and stuff yeah so. so anyway i wanted to pass it on that it's really not really something that works out just in case you were considering it from the previous episode so we're working our way towards the end of this episode. I have a fun question for you, though. If you were going to try and get a character to 100, what, how would you do it? What would you be doing? I would do low risk maps all the time. Probably T10, maybe T11, but T11 can roll the higher tier mods. So it depends on the build that I'm doing. Um, I think the biggest key to getting to 100, because you're going to be doing low risk maps over and over and over. I might even skip the boss depending on whichever maps I have at the time. Sure. Um, because it's all about XP per minute type of thing, right? Like you don't want it to last two months to get to a hundred. You want to do it quick. So I would expect the process to be quite monotonous. I think the key for me would be to pick a 
build I love. Not one that's like min-maxed to the best, just a build I love, a build I'm not going to get sick of because I'm going to be doing T10 maps over and over and over. Do you care? So I think that would be my key. To, have a to get to 100? Yeah. Maybe one day. Really? I think it'd be fun. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I, was, I think it'd be neat to have one character to say you did it and then you can like tell other people that you did it or give advice on it type of thing. It's like, well, have you ever gotten someone to 100? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Okay. Like that's the, uh, <laughs> that's the measuring point of like your, yeah. are you the best POE player? That's, that's, that's your, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How many hundreds do you have? Ooh, one. Oh my God. Yeah. 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 No, I think it'd be fun to do one day. Um, I'd like to see how monotonous and suicidal it can be. Uh, but I think the key for me would be pick a build I like as hands free as possible too. I definitely need to be able to zone out or I'd die. Hmm. Anyway, how about you? How would you get to a hundred if you cared? I wouldn't. I have no, no interest in being no. 100. I couldn't grind that much. Like I've gotten, I think, to 96. And I know exactly what would happen if I tried to go from 99 to 100. I would die once and be like, nope, not doing oh, that again. Man. Yeah, it's, just, it's like, it's like a, a day. Before. Yeah. You lose like a yeah. ton of, of your investment into it. And I have no desire to brag about having a level 100. I couldn't care less. I think it's impressive that people do it. I don't know how people do it every league. It's insane mm-hmm. to me. Um, yeah. And all the power to them. I just, not for me. I, I wouldn't, I would do the same thing. I would just grind like high, high yellow maps. And, but I couldn't do it. It would be too boring. There, there is someone I have saved as a bookmark in Chrome. Every league, they take an occultist with RF. I remember get that, yeah. I remember you telling me about who that. it is. Forget who it is. What a boring. Uh, that's crazy. Anyway. The same build every league to get to. I, it's so weird. Think of an occultist with RF. That is specific. Sure, do it for one league. <laughs> like, that's crazy. To me. They, they must love it. That's like me and minions. Me and minions. Well, how many hundreds do you have? Oh, at least three league. <laughs> You're such a noob. Yeah. Hi. Anyway, good question. Yo, good question. Now, I saw a funny Reddit post. Um, it was about the discovery of Ray class citizens discovering straws. <laughs> and the, the idea behind it was because, you know, your, your belt technically has flasks on them. Yep. So they would have a straw from each flask in their mouth. And so they would sip and they'd get a taste from all five flasks. So it was kind of taking the idea that there would either be a skill or a, a unique item or something or a mod that would let you drink from all five flasks at once. Do you think that'd be a bad idea for PoE to have one day? No, I, I have no problem with the ability to hit one through five all at once. I don't do it because I know it's against the rules, but I don't see why that's a big deal. I, I yeah. think like if, yeah, you know what? I, I use a mouse with the buttons on the thumb. I can hit them all real fast. So mm-hmm. what's the difference between me doing that and me hitting a button that just drinks all my yeah. flasks? I, I don't know what their reason is for, for not wanting it. You know what I mean? Like, Make it available to, because sometimes maybe you don't actually want yeah. to hit all of them at once, but uh, it, it is a little weird. It'd be kind of cool to have the ability to like key bind in the key bindings, like flask one, two, and three to this and four and five to this. That's yeah, how I I'd play. Love it. Like I actually, I would mine are bind yeah. bound to uh, one and two and four, five, and six. I, again, I use it with my thumb and mm-hmm. four, five, and six are always offensive. And one and two are defensive. And so when mm. I'm running into a boss or a big group, I'm just running my finger across four, five, yeah. and six. What's the yeah, difference between awesome. that and me hitting one button to just drink them? Uh, yeah, I don't have a problem with that at all. I assume you I'd don't. love it. No, no, I'd love it to be in the options menu. Even if they just added it as a cool thing for the Pathfinder or something, you know, that's already flask heavy, like have that as like an ascendancy node. People are already doing like super fast clicking. Help save some people's poor carpal tunnel symptoms and stuff. Because I'm sure yeah, that that's yeah. causing a lot of people to have like <laughs> sore wrists and fingers. Seen some people with their wrist bracers on. Yeah, that's funny. So uh, we we normally have a goal of wh- what time are we at right now? <laughs> uh, oh, we're over an hour. Uh, well, we, we have a goal, a personal goal that I don't know if we have ever achieved maybe once even though this is episode 24 of having our episodes under an hour right now we're at like 
two and a half hours, but I'll edit all of Tyler's talking out and that will take us <laughs> down to about an hour and 10 minutes. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. Hey, last episode, you gave me a hard time for having like a 10 minute intro, right? Did we? But then last episode, you had a 10 minute intro. Didn't you just say last episode twice? No, no, no. So yes, but last episode at the beginning, you gave me a hard time for talking a long time in the episode before that. So in episode 23, at the beginning, you gave me a hard time for talking a long time at the beginning of episode 22. This is why I have to take an hour and a half but worth then, of me talking home because of this right here. At the beginning of episode 23, last episode, you spent a long time talking about stuff. And, but it was awesome. But it was awesome. So anyway, I just want to make this ending longer. I'm just joking. But anyway, <laughs> we do have a goal of having our podcast under an hour ish yeah. but i don't know what but, people like i think it's a good number eh, i'm you know what i'm fine with an hour and a half hour 45 that's because you don't do anything we end this and you just <laughs> type up the description if you're ever wondering yeah. descriptions are all tyler yeah i'm sure nobody figured it out by now yeah yeah i think that's uh i think that's pretty much a wrap though for this episode episode 24 of forever exile the path of exile podcast thanks for joining us i'm justin aka ty <laughs> i'm not tyler <laughs> I'm Justin uh, AKA and, Tags. And I'm Justin Wrecker of Tags. No, is that is that gross? Kinda sounds gross. gross. I'm well, Justin. Sure, if you talk about like slamming seniors in a bedroom. I'm not slamming them, I'm saying that they're No, you were talking them slamming. That's not gross. No. Good for them. I wanna be a hundred bang. Wrecker of years. Peace. Alright. So this is the end of episode twenty four. Thanks a lot for joining us. I'm Justin AKA Tags. I'm Tyler Wrecker of Days. <laughs> No laughing in the camera. We'll, uh, we'll catch you in uh, episode 25. <laughs> you can check out the show notes below for any more information about today's episode. We have a Discord if you want to join. There's some cool cats. Cool. Hey, you cats and kittens. You know what that's from? No, I don't. That's the Tiger King guy. And you. Um, anyway. <laughs> I'm never, <laughs> ever, ever going to watch that. Yes, show. you are. Uh, we have a private. Nope, it's not a private Discord. We have a Discord. There's a link. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, We have a Twitter. Forever Exiled 82, and we have a website, foreverexiled.com. Peace. Oh, watch the music video. It's awesome.